Um, okay. So with this upcoming football season, um, how are schools in Tennessee really uh, trying to accommodate towards the uh, real uncertainty of the next football season? Well, that that's the that's the sixty four thousand dollar question. It seems we, you know, there's talks down here right now of whether it's actually going to have a fall football season next year. So, as terms of of coaches, from what I understand, they are meeting with each meeting as staffs staffs, and then sending workouts out to their players. So they you know, and each player is is obviously at home. They can't get together and work out with any of their teammates. Um, so they're just kind of uh, trying to make plans for hopefully when it starts back up, not knowing exactly when that's going to be right now. And how are you guys, you know, with trust, kind of trusting your players in the fact that you want them to, you know, if there is a football season, um, how are you trusting them or how are they trusting them to uh, really make sure that they're getting ready for the year? Well, yeah, that's another good question. They, uh, um, from what I understand, you know, because nobody can get into a, a school building to get into a weight room. If any of them, uh, you know, have the luxury of having any kind of weights at their own house, they, they could do the lifting stuff. Um, but basically, they're doing push-ups uh, and things like that and anything they can do either in their garage or in their backyard. And I, I don't know that they're asking players to videotape themselves and record it and then submit it either to them via email or via huddle or anything like that. But, you know, it's basically kind of the honor system right now. Hopefully, hopefully the kids are working out enough to stay in as much shape as they can during this time so that when they can get back together as a team, uh, they have the opportunity to not be so far behind the, behind the workout curve. And with uh, football being a really big sport in Tennessee, um, is there anything from like the public or like even on the political side that really wants to make sure that fo the football uh, fall season does end up happening um, with? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is a football is a big deal down here. And, and you know, you've got our governor and our, and our County mayor, which in Maryland would be the County executive, same kind of thing, but pushing for most things to reopen anyhow, um, as of May 1st, which is basically a week from Friday. And so that hopefully, you know, they're cautious enough when they do that and it, and it happens in such a manner, but, but I, uh, you know, I think everyone thinks that if they'll, if they'll go through those steps, they have like workout places that they want them to open in about a month. So end of May, beginning of June. So it, it would seem that once once those things are allowed to open back up again, then they'll, they might be, I don't think they're going to open up schools yet, but they might be able to open up the football locker room and the weight room and let, and let those, those groups get in and work out. Um, so, you know, nothing's going to happen until the beginning of June. I don't think for any of the football teams down here, but there is going to be a push to have the season because it's such a big part of life down here in the fall. I mean, we have Thursday night high school football games on TV down here because it's such a big deal. So, and uh, with you know spring practices canceled because of this uh, pandemic, how do you think that's putting already putting uh, a damper on things a little bit and putting the schools behind uh, with wanting to compete at a higher level into the upcoming fall? Well, so that's an interesting question because. You have, you know, you have 15 days in the spring to get in 10 days of practice, but they don't have to start on a certain or start by a certain date or end by a certain date. So some of the schools in our, in our area, um, have already had spring practice. They had it in January or February. I mean, they do it real quick or they do it real early. You know, my school, both of my schools where I've coached down here have a lot of kids on the football team. that are also on the track and the baseball teams. So they try to wait till their seasons are over so they can get everybody in pads for the 10 days that they can. Uh, so they have, they have spring practice really late, end of April, beginning of May, right before exams. And so the schools that haven't had spring practice yet don't get it or won't get it. And the schools that have, I mean, I guess they're just 
they're a little bit ahead, but with everybody staying at home for the length of time that everyone has, I, th I think any of the physical edge is pretty much everybody's equal right now. I think the only, the only thing that the schools that have had it have had a chance to install and see what it looks like to line up next to each other in pads and run plays with each other offensively and defensively. Um, and so they may have that advantage. But again, I think with everybody sitting at home, I think that's going to, that's going to level the playing field anyhow. And they're all, you know, once they get the green light to go, everyone's going to jump back in as fast as they can as they're, as they're allowed. Um, and then with players that, um, you know, coming from middle school, looking to get into uh, high school football, how do you think uh, this is all going to impact, uh, you know, with them really wanting to join the team uh, going into the fall? Well, so that – I don't see that being a big issue at all because we all have freshman teams. And so the kids that are in eighth grade right now, that'll be in ninth grade next year, they'll be on a freshman team anyhow, unless they're a rare athlete. You know, every now and then you'll get one or two that have the ability to play on the varsity or the junior varsity as a freshman. That doesn't happen very often. Um, so I, I don't see that it's going to impact, you know, eighth graders coming in. I think if we were in, if you in Maryland situation, you probably get more kids coming out when school start than you do in mid August. You know, we still st may see that down here, but we start so much earlier, you know, so much farther before school. Uh, and they already all know about it. I mean, they've been talking about it for, you know, our coaches have been visiting middle school since last fall. So, you know, the kids all know when and what the expectations are. And, um, um now we can go to the flip side with uh, seniors really wanting to graduate. I mean, there a lot of the decisions are kind of made up most likely at this time of the year, but uh, with some of them still looking into playing college football possibly um, and not really uh, having a spot, how, how is recruiting for them going on uh, at this point? Well, I think that this year's seniors, the class of 2020, those guys, uh, unless they've made a verbal commitment somewhere already um, that's been publicized, then they, they've done it on, uh, you know, with that school and the school knows who's coming and stuff. If there's anybody that's still in limbo as to wanting to go play and hasn't gotten a school yet, um, uh, you know, they're probably still able to make contacts with those colleges, but they've got to do it on their own. And I guess you could see, you know, it's easy to send huddle stuff out. So that that's probably still going on a little bit, but, the, you know, you know, the way recruiting works, the kids that are seniors this year, you know, they kind of knew last spring where they were going to go play ball. And it's very few of them that signed after their senior season, you know, the really, really good ones that that marginal kid who just really wants to just go play college football and is going to play at a D3 or a D2 school. Those guys have already signed because the signing date, I think, is early Jan is in January, some point in time, mid to late January, I think. And they've already done those. They've, they've made their choices in there. And I the, think what's hurting those guys is they're not able to get their college workouts in because they don't have access to a weight room. And the college football players, you know, as much time as they spend out on, on the field running, they spend a, as much, if not more time in the weight room getting stronger and bigger. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then with like the safe towards the safety of the players, you know, with football being one of the, you know, if you're sick, you kind of still go out and practice and play uh, at a certain point. Do you think there will be a little bit of a little bit more of a hesitation? Um, if a kid says like, I have a cough or I got a fever uh, when they go out and play or practice up uh, afterwards. Well, just like, just like you guys had it at, at Howard with a trainer on staff, you know, we do too. And I'm sure they're going to have guidelines to make sure that if someone says they're sick, then they pull them aside and they check their temperature and they ask them, you know, there's probably a system, series of questions they want to ask about, you know, how they felt in the last 24 to 48 hours or whatever. And yeah, I would assume that they are going to err on the side of caution big time. And if anyone shows anything that might be symptoms, they're going to tell, they're going to send them home. They're not even, you know, most, but you're right. Most of the time, kids are a little dinged up, got a little headache, whatever. You know, you come to practice, you work out, you know, you work through it. But I, I don't. I think with these symptoms specifically, 
they're not going to let kids around to get other kids sick. And do you think um, that would start to impact, like that would make practices or things like that end um, abruptly? Like say a kid goes to a game and is feeling these types of symptoms um, and then, you know, they know about it then. Do you think that could, you know, cause a delay at that practice or that game? Well, I'm sure that I'm sure that it could. You know, I, I I'm I'm sure they have a plan for a scenario like that already. Um, I haven't seen any guidelines posted or published yet, but I would imagine that uh, you know it's kind of like the contact tracing they're trying to do right now. Anyhow, as soon as you find someone with symptoms, then you find everyone they've been around and check them for symptoms also, and try to quarantine that individual or individuals as fast as you can. But yeah. You know, one of the things though, if you're at, when you're outdoors, it's not as easily spread as when you're indoors. So, you know, from what I've read and heard, so that you know, to, to I don't want this to sound callous, but you could move practice to another corner of the field while you're semi quarantining the 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 one or two or three or four kids that may show some symptoms and then contacting their parents and stuff like that, but. You know, I, I would imagine at that point in time, practice would pretty much be done and you'd be, you'd be, you'd be contacting parents and let them know, get your kid checked out, take his temperature. You know, you know, the ones that are really showing the symptoms, you know, they're probably going to stay home for at least a couple of days. I know that the, the rule of thumb is 14 right now, but, you know, I, I would imagine that that's going to shrink as we get closer to the fall. So. Um, uh, and then also, I was just heard over these past few days that uh, with the flu coming back up in the fall usually um, and they're more talking about uh, um, with the flu and the coronavirus really hitting at one point do you think that that could cause some type of concern um, with both those seasons uh, up, up and running with no possible vaccine in the fall? Um, I know that down here, we promote the flu vaccine to students, and we give it out at, or we used to give it out at schools. They still do in the elementary school, but you can get a flu vaccine, a flu shot, pretty much everywhere right now, or down here in, in, when, in the winter, in the winter, in, you know, December, January, February time frame. Um, you know, that, that's a good question. Would those guys happen sim simultaneously? I, I don't know. You know, again, that's kind of one of those deals where, you know, six months from now, will we have some kind of working semi vaccine for the coronavirus to get through it a little bit quicker? I don't know. I don't know. I, I know that there are times when our school system down here will shut down if there is enough flu, enough flu in the school system in terms of number of students out and more specifically number of staff out. You know, because at a certain point in time, there's no substitutes left to be found. And I think if we get to about 25% staff that's out sick, they close the schools down for a couple of days. And that's happened each of the last three or four years. We've had at least three or four sick days where schools were closed. Okay. Um, and then did you have anything else that maybe I didn't really touch on um, that you might want to really talk about? Now it's just it's just a you know uncharted waters right now. I mean nobody really knows how to do and, you, and how to deal with it or what they can do, you know. And I'm sure there's there's those football coaches out there that you know think they're quote unquote above the law a little bit and trying to figure out how they can do something with their teams that may or may or not be legal, but or you know it's probably legal, but is it is it the right thing to do right now? You know, and unfortunately, that happens in every state. That's not just Tennessee or Maryland or Connecticut. That's everywhere. And and I just hope that we we all kind of err on the side of caution, which I think Maryland leans toward anyhow. And and you know, safety is the bigger issue rather than how many football games can we play. So, yeah, I don't know. Time will tell. Um, I I I would hope there's a football season this fall. Selfishly, because I like football. Um, uh, but, you know, who knows? It's still crazy. 
Okay. Well, um, I just wanted to thank you for the, your time. Um, and hopefully you and your family are staying safe and I don't. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem.